first as you can see I've got an actual video running which is really really cool that's very very loud so I'm gonna skip it uh, I have the same loading screen but it's a little different basically what just happened there and I'll go through this a little more in the code when I get to it is it basically is loading a configuration file I've actually added a main menu which of course the other one didn't happen I went right to the character screen that was pretty much it that's pretty much what I've been working on lately I, I started with some decent stuff of adding map information which I'll show you guys here in a bit and also getting up to actually starting some GUI elements some actual user interface elements and I did start with a main menu as you can see I can actually mouse over these and they will actually change and give you little details and things of that nature we actually have a, a build and really a build here and then of course I have everything else this is just a template basically of, of a of a of an intro or, or a main menu screen uh, just a basic template so the load game doesn't do much right now it's just a standard GUI as you can see I actually have buttons that you can click and these are just basic sprites uh, nothing too too complicated right now but you know this stuff it this ad does absolutely nothing but what you see right here because <laughs> I haven't implemented that just yet but uh, some of the things I have implemented is the options we actually have an options that are running if I hit accept it it's going to save it to the configuration file and go back to the main menu if I cancel it won't save it to the configuration file I'll go back to the main menu uh, I don't have a lot of ton of options but I have you know, sound volume, which I have no sound in the game yet. I don't even have a con well. I have a basic controller for it, but I don't have a mixer or nothing really in the game yet. But when I do, I'll be able to control the sound here. And uh, visual, I don't have much of anything yet. This is probably where you'd set uh, your resolution and stuff, or not you know, resolution and, and things of that nature. That would probably be saved more in the registry than a configuration file. So this will definitely do more than it does right now. Gameplay right now, all I have is game difficulty. Again, we nothing really implemented in it, but we can actually change it here. See, it's a little too fast, uh, but basics and extras. There's nothing else. So that's what that stuff is. So the next part that I have that's actually up there and working, which is actually really really neat, and I'll tell you why here in a second, is my credits. Uh, I still have this up here because I was using it for testing reasons, so I need to clear it out. But at least from this build, is its credits. As you can see, it has game name by James Greenwood, blah blah blah. Have a basic title info here. The background actually is going to change. It's actually one large sprite sheet, and it kind of runs like a slideshow. So that way, I can actually do different backgrounds for it and uh, change it and everything. What's really really cool is these actual credits here that you see here is all being pulled from a text file. In fact, it's being pulled from this text file right here. Whoa, wrong window. Uh, it's being pulled right here. So, as you can see right there, game name by James Greenwood, blah, blah, blah. The numbers after it uh, on the actual credits is, uh, is basically the first number is the uh, font type. You know, what, what type you want to use, the big font or the little font. And then the next number is the actual spacing. How much space do I want between each credit, you know, between this credit and this credit. And that's all it does. And this actually loops, and even if I went back or came back, it would start over. So this will... Sorry about that. I had to change videos, apparently. Uh, so, like I said, this will actually loop back over. And, and it's really, really neat. And if I actually went back to the main menu and then came back it would also start over uh, very easily how do you get out of here you just press escape and it'll it'll go back to the to the main menu see it started looping again uh, so that's what it is of course exit game just exits it's very simple very basic so uh, right now of course we have new game new game right now we're, we're using the same character class selection that we had in the other one and this is just temporary for now until I get a more detailed information of how I want character creation and, and things of that nature and how many characters we're actually going to have uh, so that's why this is, hasn't changed I go and pick it real quick there you saw the loading screen I have a very small map here for testing reasons uh, but I went ahead and do that so where we're at right now GUI wise is we're getting ready to implement the actual overlay GUI here as you can see I've changed it quite a bit and we're actually going to take it to another level we're going to get rid of all this stuff here that's still remaining from the the old stuff we're gonna move this stuff a little bit and we're actually gonna put an actual uh, in-game GUI in here st the start of it and you'll actually gonna have to 
watch and, and see me work on that here in a, in a little while. So first of all, as you can see, the, I've made considerable changes to the, the, the base engine for the tile scroller. Uh, as you can see, I can actually move around and it's still tile scrolls, which is great because when I finally hit the edge of the screen, instead of being blocked, I can actually move. As you can see, there's also collision, uh, tile collision. So, you know, different rocks or whatever tiles I specify in the the uh, the, uh, the the map information file, I can actually specify exactly what tiles should be blocking and which should not. Uh, as you can see also, it's kind of hard to tell, but as you can see also, the, uh, the, the enemies here, or the NPCs here, also have collision. They have collision with the tiles, uh, which was a pain to get working, honestly. And they also have collision with each other. They will not you know, go past each other. They also won't go past me. And as you can see, I can't go past them either. Like the other one, I could. I could just run right through them. Here, I can't. Okay, which is really, really neat and, and very basic stuff. But you know, you got to start somewhere. The collision is not perfect. There's still a little tweaking to do to it, so that's why it kind of gets stuck. Uh, and as you saw at the beginning, I was kind of spawned right in the middle of a whole bunch of them because they're randomly spawned. So, really, that's all I have right now in this engine and what I have set up. It doesn't look like a whole lot, but I'll tell you what, there is a lot of work that's gone into this. And uh, it's really, really neat. And there's still a lot to do before I, I really get down to the actual design stuff. So, that's where we're at right now. So I will go ahead and pop open uh, Visual Studio here and we'll actually load up our project and I'll have you take a look at it first before we start getting down to uh, actually adding more GUI elements. So well, here's the project and uh, the very basics here. This is my solution. I have right now, it says an RPG editor. I have somewhat of an RPG editor in place. Basically all it does is, here I'll, I'll show you basically all it's actually working and actually does right now uh, and it's very simple and this eventually will hopefully be a complete uh, editor for this and and like I said since I'm kinda use this as a tool and base to do things on it's not like I'm gonna make, going to make and sell uh, games based on vb.net uh, I'm using it as a template and a basic thing to to create a project get the basics down of the structures and everything like that because when I do move on to like C sharp or or C plus plus or anything of that nature even though the languages may change and, and I'm not may not be using direct X uh, the structures the basics the, the flow and, and you know the math and stuff, most of that stuff isn't going to change so we just simple stuff you know don't, don't do much but the big thing is the map info here so we bring up the map info button here and basically this allows me to when I because right now I'm using Mappy uh, to create my tile sets or not my tile sets but my tile maps uh, so I needed more information from the files since we're basically we have no real wrapper or, or, or library to import Mappy files we can load it in the binary version of it which you can save it as and the, the book teaches about that and tells you about that but you can't do much more than that so in order to get more information out of our maps I, I've kind of built a system in order to start working on on the map info and this is a very basic start of, 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 of an actual editor so I can actually implemented this code not too long ago I mean because before this I hadn't really worked on it since before the upgrade and before I got sick but just a little while ago I actually implemented the load code to finally be able to load a map information file. So as you can see here it actually loads in the map information file. Right now it, it really is using the exact location of where this stuff is, uh, is at. Uh, that will change later on. So we have the actual map file name which is the actual binary map file name. I have them set as .map. It really is just a binary map file. Um, and then the actual tile set uh, file name. So I have that set up as well. And then we have the actual width and height of our tile set, which is 512 by 512, which is pretty standard. Uh, we have the actual tile width and height, how big the actual tiles are. They're 32 by 32. And then the columns, how, you know, since it's 32 by 32, and it's a 5, you know, 32, uh, and the, the tile set width and height is a, is a base of 32, it gives us 16 columns to work with for that. 
And then we have the actual map size. In this case, it's a 50 by 50 tile uh, tile map. So we went ahead and put that in there. And then, of course, we have our blocking tiles. As you can see, most all of them are in there. I do not know why it always does that. Yes. Uh, you know, this stu this right here is nothing new to me. I've done it before uh, quite a bit. So, And then, of course, I have the option to save and close. And, of course, I could do a brand new file from that. I have a map name right here. Right now, that doesn't do much. But later on, it'll, it'll be more important to uh, what we're doing. So that's really all this does right now. Uh, at least the the RPG editor right now. That's that's its primary function, and it'll of course add a lot more be able to locations and and all kinds of stuff. So it it should be pretty pretty neat when we really get down to it.